Hi guys, welcome back to this channel, Fidit Technology with me, Dito. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to model a composite laminate using a conventional shell elements. And I made this video for my friends that is now working on modeling this composite laminate under impact loading. So we're going to model use it a Abacus explicit. And they have problem when trying to explain Port the criteria called hashing criteria output in the field output they said that oh we found error so I, I wonder why they have errors so I want to prove in this video if the error really exists or they did mistake in their modeling so let's get started okay so I will just make a simple model so it's a plate we're going to fix these edges and then I will make some indenter and I will indent this. So we are going to model using uh, Abacus Dynamic Explicit. Usually uh, in our previous model, in our previous video, we usually use Abacus Standard in the step. So when you're in the module step, you're using Abacus Standard. Now we are going to use Abacus Dynamic Explicit. So let, let's make the the part first, we're going to use 3D deformable. It's a shell element right now. It's planar. So the size will be 300 by 300 millimeters. So it's the plate is like 30 by 30 centimeters square. Okay. I will just make it quick. Click down. And then what you need to do is to create the materials. Mechanical, elasticity, elastic, and then we're going to use engineering constants. This is the properties of uh, glass fiber polypropylene. Just for example, you can take the value from my paper, check in my Google Scholars, Dito Pulungan. I uh, will just give you the value here. It's somewhere around this value uh, 4,300, 4,300. This one is 0 0.38, is 0 0.38, and 0 0.4. And then for here, 1,700, 1,700, 1, 4, 5, 50, okay. This is the elastic orthotropic properties. And then we need to add the damage for the composite plate using hashing damage. So we said that uh, in the fiber direction, longitudinal direction under tensile, it will fail at 700 MPa. So the unit here MPa. Under compressive strength, it will fail around four, uh, 400. And transfer tension, 17 MPa. And 60 MPa. 35 MPa and 35 MPa. This is the typical values. And for the damage evolution, this is the energy. The one before was the strength. Here now the energy, the area under the curve. This one I will just put 4, uh, 10, 4, 0 0.25. And here is a 1, okay? So basically, under compression, it has higher energy than tension. But for in the fiber direction, uh, the tension energy is usually higher. Uh, because under compression, you will have uh, fiber kinking or like a micro buckling. So usually your energy is lower. It's easier to initiate a uh, micro buckling. And for damage stabilization, I will just put a small value. You guys, if you have seen my videos, uh, the recommended value should be 10 to the minus 4. Here I use 10 to the minus 3 to make it quicker done and then if you click here this is the material that we have uh now you can have a section from here you can create shell and then composite and then you click continue and then you put it here like this uh or if you want you can go from here it's a create composite layout so in the past when abacus doesn't have this button we need to do it from here uh shell composite right now we can use it here for composite we can click this button click and there's four ply counts so i will just use 
uh, quasi isotropic materials, zero, plus minus 45, and 90 symmetric. I'm going to use conventional shell. So I have four plies, and then I will make symmetric, okay? So actually, uh, there are eight plies. In the region, you can click here, double click, and then you choose here. The material, you can click here. And then you click material, okay? And the thickness, uh, each ply is 0 0.25 millimeters. And then the rotation angle, this one is zero. So here, you see here, this is the reference. One means uh, fiber direction. And then we have 45, minus 45, and we have 90, okay? Click OK. And we're done with the property, and then we need to assemble. Uh huh. You can click here, okay. Click step. Uh, now, usually we use this one, but now we are going to use dynamic explicit for a dynamic impact simulation. Uh, just as this, this is one millisecond, so it's an impact event, so it's really fast, one millisecond. And this is automatic time increment, no need to change any other thing. Just make sure that here you click here, uh, 100. Okay, and then this is the uh, this is the problem that they have. They said that, that when they click this guy, damage, this is damage uh, output, fill output for the damage in Hashin model. And also this one. They said it will cause problem, let's see. And then for the history output, you just need this energy. I will not change. I will just use 100, the same as the fill output. Okay. And nothing to change interaction on it. Oh, uh, yeah. So we need to make indenter. I forgot to do this. So we go back to the part. Now we want to make the part two, the indenter. I will just, oh, wait a minute. Let's close this one first. So, yes. So you can click here. We will make the indenter using 3D, discrete rigid, because we don't want to see the deformation of the indenter because they are very rigid usually. And then we can use revolution. Click continue. And then I will just choose this, circular. And then I will just put this line. Oh, sorry. I will just put this line here. Okay. And I put this line here. Okay. And then I will give dimension to this guy. This is the diameter of the indenter. It's uh, the radius will be 10. Uh, it's too small, I think. Uh, 10 is like one centimeter radius. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And then you click done. Or not done yet. First, we need to remove the unnecessary line. This is not needed. This is not needed. 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 So we just need this quarter, in fact, and just click here. Click done. And then you want to revolve it 360. So they will have like this. In order to make sure we have a good mesh, we need to make partition to this guy. So you click here, partition face by sketch. Click this face and then click done. And just click this line, these edges. And then you, you click from this to here. Click escape, but escape key. Then here in your keyboard and then click here and then escape. Click from the center to here. And escape again and then click done so now you have this one now you want to make another partition click and hold and then choose this one partition face using sorted path between two point you want to make partition here because if you see here you only make partition here but not in this face in the surface so you want to do that there too uh, i'm using starting point here here and then endpoint is here. Okay.
you click here and you click here now they are good all right then click done and then you don't need to make any properties because they will be rigid so you don't need to assign any constitutive model for them you just go to an assembly and then you can click here and then okay what you need to do is basically just locate them in the center but to make it easy i will just make partition also in this part uh, we'll go back part in the part one what i'm gonna do is i'm going to click this guy partition face then i will just choose this and this and then i will just choose two of them click done from here to here click create okay and done and then we go back to assembly what we need to do first is to rotate the this uh, indenter using this i think rotate right yeah rotate and then click here and click done and then there is rotation ang angle uh, rotation axis from here to here this is the rotation axis and i want to rotate 90 degree oh we did it wrongly return maybe uh, oh no 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 why oh my god let me why i confused now okay let's let's do it again here click the instance then from here to here and then maybe nice minus 90 because 90 was wrong oh yeah that's good now okay click okay and then you want to move this guy uh i want to translate translate instance this is the one that i'm going to translate and then you click done and then you click this guy here to here okay now good you see they are now start touching each other okay that that's good step we created the step before right yeah so now interaction so i'm going to create interaction using surface to surface contact continue the master surface will be this guy click shift make sure to select several surfaces okay okay and then click done so which surface because this is shell so they have two surface so they want to know which surface that is going to contact you tell him brown because this is the brown face that is going to contact then choose the second surface surface also and then you can click here and don't forget to press the shift while you click them and then brown too right and the contact interaction he click here how they will contact each other continue there are two things that you need to set the normal one using hard contact means that they cannot penetrate each other and then the tangential if you want frictionless you can make frictionless or in my case i will just put 0 0.3 because this is the normal value usually people use for the column friction okay click done hope it's okay now now it's the load for the load it's pretty simple what you need to do is displacement first uh yep you need to press shift key while you click them okay don't forget click done yeah you hold them all and oh because this is rigid you need to assign the reference point you need to go back to the part again go to the part two and then you click reference point and then just put the reference point here to make it easy to choose so you should have you should see this rp reference point and then go back again to the interaction no to the load i think yeah and then you create another one displacement and then you assign to the reference point done 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 but because this is you want to assign these 10 i think minus 10 right in the z direction if this is zero all of them zero it's okay to use instantaneous but 
when you have minus 10 and if you click okay there should be warning in explicit analysis step analysis step an amplitude must be referenced so you need to create an amplitude how this 10 changing over time so you need to create an amplitude here click here using tabular so when time is zero the amplitude is zero when time is one the amplitude is one which means that this minus 10 is basically a ram function r-a-m-p it's called ram right yeah so it's linear function from zero to the minus 10 so this is the, the function okay and then click out you need to choose this make sure you change this amplitude one okay nice and then you go to the mesh same thing for the part two it's easy i will just put one to make it smooth i think they're good right and they're pretty good and then for part one uh before you mess make sure you assign explicit shell second order accuracy enhance element deletion maximum degradation will be 0999 to make sure uh to avoid dividend by zero click ok and then you create mesh or oh, you mesh sheet first make sure it's one not 15 the default was 15 and then click mesh and then yes then you have this fine mesh okay and then what's next uh, is to to run the job okay we'll click model continue okay click here and then submit let's see my friend told me that there's error because of this hashing things and then he also tell me the solution so i just want to try if it's true or not oh yeah you see here my friend was right so in abacus explicit you will have this problem when you request for hashing failure criteria this not happen in abacus standard but in abacus explicit this happened so if you go back again to the step to the field output you create here yeah this is the the problem okay hashing criteria hashing 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 so he said don't use this if you want to uh make a uh, hashing output but just use this one damage initiation criteria it will also it output give output of hashing criteria without any error okay click okay let's see if it's if he's right or not click submit and okay yeah i will just pause this video now it's running i think Let, let's wait and then if it's running and then i will pause the video just to make the video shorter okay oh still error oh i forgot to define density okay <laughs> go back to property uh here oh density let's put a 2.1 E minus three. This is the unit because the weight is in kilograms. Okay, click OK, job and submit. Should be okay right now. Let's see. I will also show you something uh, after this, which is really important. But let's see if it's working or not yet. I hope it's working. Please. Yeah, it's working right now. They're calculating right now. Uh, because explicit just started. Yeah, you see, it's working right now. So I will just pause the video for. Yeah, welcome back again, guys, in this video. So 
before this complete, I want to show you something. It's not yet completed, you see. It's still calculating, but it's, it's, it's good that we check it before it finish. So, uh, yeah, it looks good until now, but uh, there is actually a problem in the step zero. So, in the beginning, if you see, there's some den here. It's really strange, you see? So, from the beginning, it's already dent like this. You know why? Because when you're modeling these shell elements, uh, let me draw. So imagine that you are drawing a shell elements uh, like this. This is the, the shell elements. And then you make this indenter like this. This will make the problem in the analysis because actually the shell problem has a finite thickness, right? So for example, if the thickness is two millimeters, what you actually draw in the abacus is actually the mid plane of the plate. So actually they have this one millimeter here to this direction, and they have this one millimeter to this direction. The problem is that if you put anything in denter, for example, like this, they are touching each other. So the indenter touching the mid plane from the beginning of the analysis, what Abacus did was usually they make some adjustment to the slave of uh, to the notes of the of the plate because you choose the plate as the slave node. So they will change this guy. So it, instead of having the straight line, your plate will be dented uh, something like this. So this is the adjustment because. They want to make sure that there is, you account for the thickness from the beginning, the thickness of the plate, which is one millimeter, for example, in this case, because one, one ply is 0 0.25. You have total eight ply here, eight ply here, and then this is the mid plane of the shell, the one that you draw, the surface that you draw. So this is one millimeter, one millimeter. So if you don't put gap from the beginning, Abacus will try to move it as their uh, on their own. So this is wrong. So what you need to do, if you want to set up your model correctly from the beginning, you need to give the gap from the beginning between the indenter and the plate, not touching from the beginning, okay? So what you can do is basically you need to return to the job and kill the job and then you go back to this assembly. So what we're going to do is that we will separate this indenter one millimeter above just to allow for this thickness of the shell element to be included. You click translate. You click here. Done. So just choose zero, zero, zero. And then for the second endpoint, you put this value one. So basically you're moving it uh, one millimeter up. Okay. And they're good now. And then you can, you can run again the job. Now, actually, uh, the, the, you account for the thickness of the shell elements. And then you can submit again the job. And the simulation will run. And then we'll check later if you have this uh, bend, this dent from the beginning of the simulation or not. I will continue again the video after we finish the simulation, okay? Hi guys, welcome back again now. The simulation is not yet finished, but I think we can already see some results. Uh, let's just click results. And then let's rotate it. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to rotate, press Control Alt and then uh, press your mouse. You see, yeah, so now there, you, you, you see clearly, uh, now there is no, there is no dent in the beginning of the simulation. Uh, see, the dent uh, happens when, start happen when the, the indenter moves, which is great, right? You see, so there is, even though they're not really physically or as you see touching each other, they are actually touching each other. 
in the in the mathematical formulation why because the shell element has finite thickness so abacus account for this finite thickness of the shell element okay when when they're doing this contact which is nice right see so and let's remove the mesh to make it nice so you can click here common options and then free ages apply so this is the result okay this is until frame 23 if you want to see oh i see you st we still have hashing even though we don't click hashing criteria we click dm C R I T, I think damage criteria. Okay, you see, this is hashing failure fiber compression. So, this hashing in the fiber direction they have compression, and uh, that this is the tension. So, there is no much tension, fiber tension, but I think there's a lot of matrix uh, tension. Huh? So, you see here. And if you want to, this is the failure criteria. If you want to check the damage pro, pro progression, uh, for example, matrix, this is the matrix tension damage, and this is a fiber tension damage. Uh, I think you want to see matrix tension. So the damage start to occur here in the middle. It's nice. And if you want to see from the top, there's a slight uh, inclination of this damage in the matrix, maybe because you have this uh, 45 degree, right? And yeah, that's nice. That's it. That That's it, uh, the tutorial for today. This is how you model these. Uh, shell elements uh, how you model the co composite laminate using conventional shell elements uh, yes for the explicit method you when you click the hashing criteria it can in in the out field output it will create error so what you need to do is to instead of choosing hashing criteria you need to use damage criteria uh, they will export you the same field output and then yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Well, this is fiber compression. So there's a lot of fiber compression here. Fiber tension. And then matrix. Uh, this is matrix tension. Huh? There are a lot of matrix tension. Oh, nice. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, we learned a lot today. We learned a lot what caused a problem in Abacus explicit when you choose hashing criteria and then we show you how to fix it. And then we also show you what happened if you don't give gap between the shell and the indenter. So you need to set up your, uh, your indenter uh, appropriately to account for the gap due to the shell element thickness. And we also show you how to use this a uh, property for the cohesive and that's nice so i hope this uh, video is useful for you guys uh, just in case this video is useful for your research please don't forget to subscribe to my channel like my video and cite my publications and that's all that's it thank you so much goodbye